Hello everyone, Karnasa here and welcome back to Kerbal Gets Real. It's 1970 part two. And well, we're gonna continue on with the construction of Community Station, also known as The Nest. We've also got a few other missions that we are gonna be paying attention to this year. And of course, we're gonna see more launches of the Longsword. So we're going to turn to the first launch of this episode. This is going to be the Phantom launched on the 20th of July on top of a Tranquility launch vehicle. This was the winner for the outsourcing competition for the power module of Community Station. So this was submitted by CJB407. Thank you very much for your submission. There we go. The fairings have now deployed and we can see this module in all of its glory. It is absolutely massive, absolutely huge. And well, it has got a ridiculous amount of solar panels. So this is gonna more than satisfy the requirements for a power module for Community Station. There you go. We can see them all deployed now there, looking very much like a flower. But there we go. We are about to dock to the station. So now I am going to come into the vehicle assembly building just for a little bit. And I did this build on stream, but I thought, you know, I'd do a bit of a recap, do a fast time lapse whilst I was building this. So Longsword currently is unable to dock to Community Station. So what I have gone in and done is actually built a docking adapter so that we can actually dock that shuttle to the space station because, well, I would really like to be able to do that. So all this is really is a procedural crew tube with a Mark II docking adapter slapped onto the top just so that we can actually get that shuttle done. There we go. Of course, we're going to be adding some RCS and we're going to be adding some engines so we can do some orbital maneuvers so that we can actually rendezvous with community because, well, once we've launched this, it will be a bit of a waste if we just left it in low Earth orbit. But yeah, it was a very quick vehicle assembly building section and there's that. So now we're going to move on to the second launch of 1970 Part 2. This is going to be the Corzina Habitation Module launched on the 1st of August. This on top of an Icarus Super 66. So this is a fair whack heavier than the last module that we launched. This was submitted by Ash19256. Thank you once again very much for submitting this craft. There we go. Once again, the fairings have gone and now we can kind of see it. This isn't the best of angles, if I'm going to be particularly honest, to actually see what this entire thing looks like. So the reason why I had to wait for 1970 Part 2 to launch all of these is because that Capola module, I did not have that unlocked. So I had to rush research that so that I could actually get these craft built up and launched because I did want to get Community Station all done in 1970. It would have been really nice to, well, have a low Earth orbit station, a functional low Earth orbit station because... Well, I didn't have one. We did have Cause Light a long time ago, but yeah, that kind of died. So there we go. You could see me there. I was just plotting out the maneuver so that we could actually rendezvous with Community Station. I thought I'd leave that in. You may be able to notice that this episode is a little bit shorter than a regular episode of Kerbal Gets Real. And the reason why that is, well, that will be seen later on, but I was having a few issues with a certain craft that we will see very shortly. But there we go. We can see Community Station has come into view now. We are going to be slowing down and this is sped up to four times speed. And if you look how slow we're killing off our velocity, well, yeah, it took a long time, a really long time to actually kill off all of our velocity so that we can perform our docking maneuver with Community Station. There we go, we are just turning around and once again, docking autopilot, I'm gonna leave it to do its thing. There we go, here we come in just now to actually dock. Now we are gonna be turning to that docking adapter that I did just design momentarily, briefly, moments ago, I think. Yeah, is that, is that what I wanna say? I'm not sure, I, I don't know. Anyway, so this has been launched on top of an Adventure One launch vehicle. A vehicle that is actually starting to see some use. There we go. The reason why I wanted to keep in that part of the launch is, well, those Algol solid rocket motors, 
Yeah, they're not very reliable, and we actually lost three to explosions whilst launching this vehicle. This is actually the second one of this that I launched. So I did launch two of these adapters. If you want to go see the launch of both of them, it is in the live stream. The reason why I had to do two is the first one, for whatever reason, I'm not entirely sure. Well, the actual thrusters that we can see slowing us down now decided they didn't want to work and yeah luckily this thing only took about 14 days to build so it wasn't too bad but there we go we're coming into dock and community station is finally finished now this is why this episode took well it's a little bit shorter so this is the first attempt of a launch of longsword in 1970 part 2 and we're going straight up, Mech Jeb is not working. So, I tried again. This is all on the live stream, by the way. I think I actually tried this four times on the live stream. That's why we are suffering a little bit of stutter there. So yeah, I tried again, didn't work. And then I tried again and it didn't work. And I was kind of hoping to myself that because I was doing it on the live stream, maybe a game restart might actually fix the issues that I was having. I would have liked to have thought that, but no, when I finished the live stream and I came back to try and actually do this later on, it still did not work. So I was thinking that MechJev Ascent Guidance was messing up and that there was something wrong with Ascent Guidance. So I did decide to do it manually on my own in a little bit, but this is one with Ascent Guidance once again. And I kind of thought, well, maybe it thinks. You can see autopilot status awaiting liftoff. I thought maybe it doesn't think that we've hit space and that we've actually launched. So I hit space then, kind of not realizing that it would launch those solid rocket motors off. And yeah, it came crashing back down into the space center, which wasn't very good. And now this is actually the launch that I managed to do on my own. Once again, you can see that I have tried to use Ascent Guidance. I noticed it wasn't working, so I turned it off. And then we're going to go swap over to Smart ASS and actually try and launch this manually. Now, I was a little bit concerned doing this because obviously the longsword, it's got all kinds of weird center of mass and center of thrust. It's, it's not the easiest thing to fly, as you can see from me, well, flailing around basically there, trying to actually get this thing in the correct orientation that I wanted. But there we go. I have done that now and we are on our way to space. So because this is the first time that I've actually flown this manually, well, I wasn't particularly good at doing this, I guess. Yeah, it's actually coming back and trying to fly this manually wasn't great. You can see as well, there was another kind of weird thing. The craft kept disappearing in and out of view and we are shuddering. The entire thing is shaking and I don't know, well, at this point, I didn't know what was causing that. But I do now. I do know now what, well, basically what is causing that. If you look on the top right, you can see the Kerbal Engineer readout. So we are in biome water, but underneath that, if you look, it says situation landed. We are quite clearly not landed at the moment. I honestly, don't know why that is, but this led to, basically, I think that is the cause of all of the problems that I was having with Longsword. So because we were landed, MechJeb thought that we weren't taking off, so it was doing all of the weird things. When I actually got to space with this, uh, I suppose, spoiler alert, I do get to space with this launch. It is definitely by far not the best of a sense, but I do actually manage to get into orbit. But anyway, when I do get into orbit, when I try and time warp, well, I can't because it says I'm moving across terrain. That was another issue. And for some reason, well, my actual orbit line just was non-existent. So that was another issue that I was having with this launch. So it was all kinds of bad. You can see kind of there now that we don't have an orbit line. Where is it gone? What has happened? I really don't know, but yeah. So this happened with Excalibur anyway. I then tried to do it with Andril, and it still did the same thing despite using a different craft. And I did it multiple times as you saw. And then I decided, well, you know what I'm gonna do? 
I'm gonna go into the VAB and build a new one completely from fresh. So a completely fresh space shuttle. So I did that, I launched that, and I had the exact same problem. I honestly do not know what was going on with this. It was a completely fresh shuttle. So unfortunately, even though Longsword has only seen action in 1969 and 1970, it has been the death of Longsword. We will not see another flight of the Longsword, which is a real shame because this did take me an incredibly long time to actually build. To only have flown it, I think, four times, it was rather upsetting. But you can see I am actually now coasting till we get to orbit again because, well, we are going down. I did keep firing up those engines to make sure that we didn't go too low, but yeah, we are going up now and we are going to hit, well, that 140 kilometers, which means we are actually in space. Then I thought what I'll do is, well, we'll burn those AJ-10 190s again and actually try and get us into orbit. And I did get us into orbit and another weird issue that I was having is that my orbit was changing all the time despite not having anything going, no RCS, no engines on. So yeah, this, this whole thing was absolutely cursed. This was cursed and as I've said, yeah, it's, it's the end of Longsword. So what I am going to be focusing on probably in the next live stream that I do, which will be on the coming Monday, well, I think I'm going to dedicate that to building a new shuttle. A better shuttle. A bigger shuttle. We'll probably be focusing on Mark III parts. But yeah, look forward to that in the next live stream. So now we are finally going to be launching the BKB resupply module, which, well, this got submitted in an outsourcing competition quite a long time ago. This was once again submitted by Ash19256, so thank you very much. And this is on a Uber launch vehicle. There we go. We can see the fairings kind of went, but they didn't. One of them decided to stay on, which led to all kinds of issues when I tried to actually get this into orbit. There we go, we can see that our translunar injection stage has gone, so we blew that craft up. Now we are going to be turning to the infamous egg, this on the 16th of November 1970. We've got a little bit of a manoeuvre to do, just so we can fine tune our approach to Saturn. Here you can see me really kind of just messing around with the RCS on the craft, seeing if I can get it in alignment with Titan's orbit. I'm gonna say I didn't do a particularly good job, so I kind of just left it as close to Saturn as I could, and I will kind of figure out that, kind of get to that when we actually get to Saturn. Hopefully it's not gonna cost a stupid amount of Delta V to actually correct our inclination when we get there. There we go. In 1,700 days almost, we're gonna turn back to the Titan scanner. But now the last event of 1970 part two is Venscan arriving at Venus. This was an incredibly long burn, so I have cut out most of it. But there we go. We've got in a nice orbit and we're gonna scan Venus. So yeah, that was the end of 1970. Like I said, a little bit of a shorter episode. Not really an awful lot happened, except Longsword did do a die, which I am really not very happy about. I, as I said in the Longsword section, I really wanted that to work. I wanted that to be a staple of Conas' space program changed to Conas' space program now. I'm going to have to edit the flags and do all of that, but that is the new name of the space program. Just because CSA, I mean, an unfortunate acronym, but there we go. That was the end of 1970. And let me tell you, 1971, well, we've got a very exciting mission coming up. We are going to be going to Mars with our first manned crew to Mars. And I am very excited for that. It all works. I've done it in a sandbox, I've done it, and I know it works. Hopefully nothing goes wrong, and if nothing goes wrong, it will be the first time that I have sent a crew to Mars in real solar system, in realism overhaul, with Kerbalism, everything, all of the things that make it really difficult. So yeah, I am very much looking forward to doing that, and we will see the start of that in next year. But that will come next year. 
If you have enjoyed this episode, why not give it a like? If you've really enjoyed this episode and would like to continue with the content on my channel, please do consider subscribing. I have been Karnasa, and I will see you later.